lights on. Merle's, Merle's riding, riding her. There we go. Good morning. I'm Kent Biefeld. I'll be your liturgist today. And I welcome you and everyone listening anywhere out there that, to the Gibson City United Methodist Church. I have a few announcements to start off. Next weekend, Saturday and Sunday, will be blessing of the backpacks during both worship services. All ages are invited to participate. The students can bring your book bag and anyone else who has a trade can bring their briefcase, stethoscope, hammer, drill, uniform, apron, etc. Everyone is welcome for the blessing. Well, maybe a, maybe a toy one. <clears throat> the Sesquicentennial Community Worship Service will be at the North Park on the 12th of September at 2 p.m. for a community worship service at that time. There will be a hymn sing with the time of scripture and prayer, followed by pie and ice cream social. Contact the office if you can help serve pie and ice cream. There's a Midwest Mission Distribution Center Volunteer Day coming up on Friday, August 27th. We invite people to sign up to go to that. It's an all-day event, and if you're interested, please contact Kim Fisher or the office. There are some Sunday school changes. The youth will be meeting in the Sunday school for the next four weeks, but not this week because of the water. So we invite any kids attending the worship service to come down to the fellowship hall following the kids' message for a short time of children's church those weeks. And mark your calendar for September 12th at 10 a.m. for our annual Sunday school kickoff. And the fall Sunday school will start on the 19th. <clears throat> right. I've got a couple of things I want to add to that tweet. Uh, Eric sent an email out to us all. The kids' day up at the park for the Shriners has been postponed. Uh, we'll come up with a date. We'll let you know when that is. I think that's an excellent idea, Eric. I'll give you a seven and a half on that one, okay? All right. The other thing, we're still going to do pie and ice cream. Woohoo! <clears throat> okay. But we're going to do it a little differently. We're not going to cut pies. We're going to get the individual pies. I think pecan, blueberry, cherry, and apple. I think those are our choices. <clears throat> if you want a choice, you're going to have to get in line early to get your choice because I think we're doing 200 pies and they will be 200 divided by 4. That means there will be 22 pies in each pile, right? <clears throat> No, 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 no. Is that bad math? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, we're not slicing. You get the whole pie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the other thing is, instead of scooping ice cream, we're going to get the individual cups. And the reason we've decided to move that way is because of the spike in the variant. So uh, I just wanted to get that in, maybe make people feel more comfortable. And I guess that way you could take it home and eat it if you... You get the whole pie. I was close. I <laughs> you'd, you'd take one home and come and get another one. I know what you'd do. All right. I just want to let you folks know what's going on. This morning, uh, it is a special morning in the life of this church. We have a baptism, and we have two people joining the church. So, hey, it's an exciting morning. So... <laughs> What will happen is, right after we come and light the candles, we're going to do that business, and then we're going to fall right and follow, try to follow, it's me, try to follow that uh, bulletin that you have in your hands. All in favor, say aye, aye, aye. aye, aye, aye. Uh, all right, so the aye, aye, aye's have it. Next, there will be a greeting card drive. If you have any extra greeting cards laying around your home, Mick Kingsley is organizing a greeting card drive at the Heritage Manor. The purpose of this card drive is to provide a library of cards for the residents to send out. For example, if a resident needs a birthday card for a grandson or granddaughter, they could go to this library and find one to send. 
There'll be a basket in the narthex for the collection, and you can call Mick Kingsley if you have any questions. And uh, in September, the prayer partners, we will hold a prayer partner selection for adults in our church family who wish to participate. Please see an usher for a prayer partner form. That's all I have, so are you ready to praise and worship God? Yes. Okay, well, we'll have the prelude now. A warm, heartfelt thank you to everyone who has been pitching in. And in Gibson City, I was told by one of the Red Cross volunteers that a couple months ago, and I'm not, I'm not saying this just to rub Bloomington normal in the ground, but they had a similar disaster hit them. They said they had the meeting and there were just a handful of people showing up to say, we'll help. When we had our meeting, the firehouse was full of people saying, what can we do? So thanks to everyone. There is still a ton of volunteering that will need to be done. Uh, lots of stuff. Everybody that came in and helped clean and sweep and get the water out of the basement here, I was told that wasn't the first time that had happened. Is that correct? OK. Everybody has suffered loss here, or everybody knows someone who has suffered loss. And we are in this boat together. I understand that the Paxton United Methodist Church is taking up a collection, sending it directly to us so we can help support others. That's pretty nice, I thought. Uh, John Halk is a pastor over there, and it was good to hear that they are on board. Uh, we are going to do the mission of socks and the money will go towards the cleanup effort and helping people get back. Did you notice if you drive by the parking lot, there are two big trailers out there and that is the conference coming together. We have disaster relief teams. Uh, one team is from Fairbury. The other team is from Coal City. Uh, next week, there are going to be people here. They need a place to sleep. I told them they could put a cot up in the high school senior room, and if they need showers, they can come to the parsonage, and they will need showers. Amen. Uh, okay. So when you see that activity going on, know that the United Methodist Church is responding in a much larger way, too that our connectional network is working right here in this disaster. Uh, last thing, uh, I don't know what's going to happen as far as the cap that we need to meet, or the, the, the point we need to meet is $19 million in total damage before any assistance kicks in. That's what I understand. I don't know if Gibson City is going to hit that 19 million. In some ways, it would be nice if we did. In other ways, it just says it's more devastating. So I don't know how to pray for that, but I think especially North State Street folks, you know, my goodness, if you haven't been up there, it is unbelievable. People have lost just about everything. 
So I've had several ask, there's no water in the basement of the parsonage. I don't know how that happened. Uh, good living, <laughs> but uh, I know I've been working in houses that were to the floor joists full of water, pumping out water. So, hey, thanks for pulling together. Pulling together is a good segue into this next section that we are about to enter. And you said you were ready to praise and worship God. One of the ways we do that is taking care of business in the church. Uh, Emma has come this morning. Hi, Emma. Everybody say hi, Emma. Hi. Uh, come up here and stand next to me if you don't mind. I'm not going to bite you. I promise, okay? <clears throat> Emma is my great niece. She's not the greatest niece. She's just my great niece. <laughs> and you come today to receive your baptism. We were going to do this in a lake, but we just didn't get a lake. Well, I guess we could find one now. <laughs> but it's probably a lot safer to do it here. And I need, just you and I talking, we've talked about baptism, what it means. I need to ask some questions that you answer. This is called the Holy of Holies in the church. This is the place that God said, build this and you do your work here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little work today. I love it that Emma is coming on her profession of faith. It means that in her heart, she is speaking for herself and she's ready to receive Jesus as her personal Lord and Savior through baptism. Emma, do you profess that Jesus Christ is your Savior? Yes. Do you understand and will you cooperate with understanding that everybody is invited to this baptism no matter their age, their race, no matter the color of their skin, how smart they are, how smart they aren't, how big they are, how big they aren't. Everybody is welcome to this baptism. Okay, will you to the best of your abilities live into your baptism professing Jesus as the one who holds you? Yes. All right, are you ready to be baptized? Yes. Do you want anybody to come up and stand with you? Uh, it, huh? Oh man, it's up to you. No. No, you're fine? Let's walk over here. All right. I'm going to have you hold this. And I got it as cold as I could, Okay. No, I, I didn't do that to you. Jesus walked into the Jordan River, and his cousin was standing there. His cousin was John the Baptist. And when he did, John says, what are you doing here? And Jesus said, I come to be baptized just like everyone else you're baptizing. And John says, oh, no, I, I can't baptize you. You're the son of God. And he says, I must be baptized. I have to, in my own heart, give my life to God. So that's what you're doing here today, just like Jesus did. Know that this is not salvific. This water and what we're doing here is only you and I, all who have been baptized, saying that we think like Jesus thinks, that we want to be with God. Salvation happens through your middle name. Your middle name is Grace. Grace. That's right. So it's the grace of God that saves. Nothing else that we do saves us. By loving and living into God through Jesus Christ, we find our salvation. So I wish your life to be full of nothing but God-given raining down from heaven kind of blessings. So your name is Emma Grace, Grace Roberts. Is that right? Yes. I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Oh, man. It wasn't bad, was it? I can dump it on you. <laughs> Here is a towel. I, yeah. I love to lay hands on people 
Emma, I'm going to ask you to stand right in front of me. With your permission, I'm going to put my hand, face me, and come right here. No, you can just relax. Can I put my hands on your shoulders? I'm going to invite, yeah, you won't see who's coming up here. I'm going to invite anybody and everybody who wants to come up and join in this prayer of blessing for her to do so. And lay your hands on my hands. So, there's a rush. They're running. Oh, come on, church. Now it gets heavier and heavier and heavier. That's the love that is being laid on you right now. I'll let you turn around in a minute and see who walked up here. Some you will know, some you won't know. But you are now in the body of Christ through your baptism. That's pretty cool. Let's pray. It was at Grandpa's funeral when Emma started talking to me about baptism. And I remember Bob this morning. I remember going to church with him and the way Bob showed his love through the teachings of Jesus to everyone. Emma, you are now filling a spot in your family. I pray for your success, for you to search and find Jesus, and for you to be in service to all the world. As our newly member baptized person, go and serve the world. Amen. Now you can turn around and see all these people came up and laid their hands on you. All right. Let's celebrate this, folks. Now, now bit of feels you may not want to run back to your pew. Terry, John, you don't need to run all the way back there. Let's just take care of business while we're taking care of business. You know Elvis had that on his plane. You can stand right beside me, one on one side, one on the other. Yeah. And thank you for coming in and talking to me. I first want to say to you, I know that you've had some struggles and challenges. And I am sorry about that. But it, just to no end, excites me. You have an opportunity once again. <laughs> Not that you ever stopped. But to be enfolded by this congregation and becoming a member. I have some membership questions I need to ask when we do this. Will you, to the best of your abilities, support the Gibson City United Methodist Church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? And, here's the biggie, witness. Will you use those things to Forward the mission of Jesus the best you can. Yes. Okay. Yeah, well, if you say so, I believe you. Okay. You said you liked my word okie-dokie earlier, so okie-dokie. The beauty of church membership is, no, we aren't superior or we, we don't have an edge on anybody, but we do join a body of believers. Uh, are there any sinners in here? Amen. Yeah, yeah. We are a group of people seeking to serve Jesus as fully as we can through this place. And let's see. John, I welcome you. Let me shake your hand. As our newest member right now, it's about to change. Okay, okay. <laughs> Terry, I welcome you. Oh, I'll get that in a minute. Put that in that hand. I welcome you as our newest member. <laughs> Let's celebrate membership today. Thank you for coming up. I'll get that. Yeah, you are. This is yours. It's official. Okay, you, 
you can show everybody that, frame it, it's really nice. I'm turning it back over to you, sir. Okay, if you all please join me in a call to worship, but please be seated because this will take a bit. Uh, yeah. I, I got to set this up just a little, please, Ken. Um, open your hymnals to page Roman numeral seven. Let's see how many people know what Roman numerals are. There's little hymnals in the back of the, for those of you who are visiting, uh, Chris, reach behind and grab a couple hymnals and send them forward. Thank you. And uh, Roman numeral seven, I'm starting this because of the passage you're going to read in a little bit. It made me think of singing. And Wesley gives us some rules, okay? Okay. Directions for singing, that this part of divine worship may be more, may be the more acceptable to God, as well as more profitable to yourself and others. Be careful to observe the following directions. Number one, learn these tunes before you learn any others. Afterwards, learn as many as you please. Two, sing them exactly as they are printed here without altering or mending them at all. <laughs> and if you have learned to sing the, them otherwise, unlearn it as soon as you can. <laughs> Number three, sing all. See that you join with the congregation as frequently as you can. Let not a slight degree of weakness or weariness hinder you. If it is a cross to you, take it up and you will find a blessing. Number four, sing lustily and with good courage. Beware of singing as if you were half dead or half asleep, but lift up your voice with strength. Be no more afraid of your voice now, no more ashamed of its being heard than when you sung the songs of Satan. Five, sing modestly, do not bawl so as to be heard above or distinct from the rest of the congregation, that you may not destroy the harmony, but strive to unite your voices together so as to make one clear, melodious sound. Six, sing in time. Whatever time is sung, be sure to keep with it. Do not run before nor stray behind it, but attend closely to the leading voices and move therewith as exactly as you can. And take care you sing not too slow. This dawling way naturally steals on all who are lazy. And it is high time to drive it out from among us and sing all our tunes just as quick as we did at first. Seven, above all sing spiritually, have an eye to God in every word you sing Aim at pleasing him more than yourself or any other creature. In order to this attend strictly to the sense of what you sing and see that your heart is not carried away with the sound but offered to God continually, so that shall your singing be such as the Lord will approve of here and reward when he cometh in the clouds of heaven. The word of God for the people of God. We will now have our opening hymn, Take Time to Be Holy. Did you see that point where it said, sing them all and sing them completely? And the preacher has one of the verses taken out today. <laughs> I just had to laugh at that. One, three, and four, I'll invite you, if you are able to stand, take time to be holy.
invite the children to come up. We're going to do our mission socks this morning. Uh, we have a video from VBS. So I think April is going to play the video now while we collect, or you want to do it at, okay, while we collect, and you guys take a sock and go fill her up, okay? You're not doing it? You're, you're okay. You just sit here with me then. All right. Well, you know what kind of flower this is called? A pink flower. Exactly right. All right. Through every storm of life, I know you're by my side. So I am holding on to your promises. You are the God who holds my future, all my dreams. So I was all but gone a second chance to sing a brand new song you opened up my yeah. eyes to see you rescued me rescued me you showed the way when there was no way out cleared up my mind when you erased all doubt you made me strong when I was weak you rescued me cousin. Wow, that's pretty cool. Thanks for putting that together. It was a great VBS just being with you all. What was your favorite part? The water balloon fight. The sponge. Basketball. Yeah. Uh, mine was the ice cream at the end. <laughs> just thought I'd tell you. We got Dairy Queen Dilly Bars. They were unbelievable. The best Dilly Bars ever. Well, it was 100 degrees outside. Let me tell you something. Ice cream melts when it's hot. That's why you got to eat it fast. Okay. Well, I know, but come on, give me a little room. So, how many of you have heard the song, Jesus Loves Me? Raise your hand. How many know the words? Okay, well, if you know the words, tell the first verse to me. Starts with, Jesus loves me. This I know. I, don't sing it. I want you to tell me. Don't sing it. Oh, no. No, just tell me. All right, let's see if we can do it again. The first word is, Jesus does what? And this I know, for the Bible tells me so. 
little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Then the chorus is, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. So it doesn't mean too much when you just say it. It doesn't feel right. Because you were showing us. It, it just didn't. Jesus loves me. This I know. Is it easier to remember when it's in a song? Yeah. Okay, let, let's sing along. Everybody jump in here and see if you can help us. Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. This next part is called a chorus. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. The scripture today is going to talk about the importance of singing. Or at least I think it does. What's different between talking and singing? Got a, got a melody. You got a song, right? And when you don't have a song, you're just talking. Has music ever affected you and made you feel certain ways? Have you ever heard a rock and roll song like, I love rock and roll. Put another song in the jukebox, baby. I See, that's a fun song, right? See, it moved us to a place. <laughs> but then there's slow songs. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. Hang down your head and cry. What kind of song was that? Kind of a sad song. Well, country. <laughs> but it was a sad song. So music puts us in different places emotionally. Music. It can make us happy. Music can put us in good moods. Music can put us in bad moods. Music and song is a gift from God. You know, I think one of God's favorite musicians was a harp player. His name was David. And he would play his harp for Jesus, for God. Another guy that uh, came onto the music scene around 2,000 years ago was a guy about your age. He's the other musician I thought of. But he didn't play a harp or a guitar or a flute. He played a drum. <laughs> yeah, he was a drummer. He went to Jesus' cradle. You know that place where Jesus laid as a baby and he played his drum for him. Now I don't know about you but I think drums are pretty loud don't you? Yeah yeah. What it have been like showed up and he had his right by the cradle right by there think it have been loud? Uh, Mr. Titus is here today. Can you play Mr. Titus, can you do that? It's, it's harder. So I'm thinking that might have been the first rock and roll show up. <laughs> well, this passage makes me think of music. Listen to it today as it's read to you and shared with you. Thanks for coming up. Thanks for doing the mission socks this morning. Ye Oh, you didn't know we could play rock on an acoustic guitar. Oh, my friend, you wait and see. I bet that's the first time I love rock and roll. 
It's ever been played in this sanctuary? <laughs> Don't know. Scripture reading this morning comes from the fifth chapter of Ephesians, verses 15 through 20. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God for the people of God. you sit down, turn to each other and say those three words that sets our hearts on fire. God loves you. Turn around and yeah, God loves you. Yeah, when that boils down, just have a seat. <laughs> it's hard to say it just once, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I have a note from a member of the trustees, and I better do it because she's my sister-in-law. <laughs> but uh, the trustees have a brand new defibrillator. That brought you to just your, just made you stand right up. Now, you've seen defibrillators, you know, uh, clear, boom, clear, boom. They save people's lives. Only if people know how to use it. So we're looking for around 10 people. You are one of them. Not might be. No, you are one of them that wants to learn how to do that, right? right. Uh, thank you, Jim. <laughs> Mark, that, was, that was as close to an amen as I've ever gotten. All right, so uh, if you would, I think, see the sign-up list that is out here on the table in the narthex. In other words, the room that's just north of here. There's a sign-up sheet. If you would be one of the people, and I think it could be more than 10. I really do. The more people that know how to do that, uh, it saved my life, those defibrillators. Uh, maybe one of you have been saved by one of those but if somebody should ever need it we would be ready amen no all right so Sandy I did that you're welcome all right um, ten things that sing in hips for you that is helps okay number one it relieves stress how many of you agree with that when you sing, stress goes away. Amen. This is pretty cool. It stimulates the immune response. It helps us heal. Hmm. Three, increases your pain threshold. Do you agree? <laughs> There was a comment that said it depends what music you're listening to. The kids proved that, didn't they? They liked the rock and roll, but they were really quick to point out, oh, that's country. You know, okay. It promotes, <laughs> I like this one, promotes less snoring. 
Okay. Certainly it improves lung function, doesn't it? I mean, we have to, we have to breathe to sing. This is kind of cool. It develops a sense of belonging and connection. I felt that last week at 3 o'clock right here in this room. We had the Gibson Area Music Association doing a fundraising concert. And we all were closer for singing together. It connected us. Hmm. Enhances memory in people with dementia. I know this is true. When I was at Gilman, I would go up to Danforth. There was a Lutheran village there that had a memory, uh, just a special memory section for people with Alzheimer's and dementia. And you know, I could go and read to the, the folks, but the minute I would break out my guitar, the same thing happened with the kids when they tried to tell me the words to Jesus loves you. Just tell me the lyrics to that song. Well, I can't tell it to you, but I can sure sing it to you. Let's try it with I love rock and roll. Really? No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Okay. I agree 100% with number eight. It helps with grief. Songs help me heal when my heart's broken. Proven time and time again. <laughs> all right, everybody, here's the reason, number nine, why we all need to do it. It improves mental health and mood. If you're in a bad mood, start singing. You'll be in a better mood. If you're feeling like you're in a cloud, start singing. You'll come out of that cloud and you'll... I, I, you know what? I, I've got to... Do you remember when we were reading Wesley's Rules and it said there in number five, at the end it said uh, that Satan, the devil, you know... Uh, don't sing the songs of Satan. <laughs> I have a clue where that may have come from. Back in the day of Wesley's and right before, uh, there weren't hotels. How many of you knew that? There were not hotels. But there were bars. All right? People would come into these bars... That's what we call them today. Road houses, okay? And they would get a meal. And then upstairs in these road houses, they had sleeping areas. Now, it wasn't like the Holiday Inn, folks. It was a huge area, sometimes with just straw on the floor. People would go up there, lay down, and go to sleep. But down below, what was going on? Hell, the preacher's saying that going in bars is walking with Satan. You know I don't believe that. But I have seen Satan show up a time or two in a bar. Amen. What if I told you some of our favorite hymns came out of bars? Not bears, bars. There once was a girl and her name was Matilda. She looked like a bar and she hugged like one too. So the author of that song, the next day while riding his horse, started thinking of a tune. <laughs> oh, I can't hum that because it's talking about Matilda. If you ever have a chance, look up the words to Matilda. It gets a lot worse. I can't sing that on this horse, but I can't get that tune out of my head. Has that ever happened to you? You can't get a tune out of your head? Oh, I've got to write some new words. Mm. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, I know. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing that hymn came from that situation 
Now, I am sure Wesley was not saying everyone who went into a bar was a heathen. But he was sure saying, you know, Satan can show up anywhere. And it kind of comes through that atmosphere. It lends itself to it. Because it said, don't get drunk on wine. Remember that in the... Yeah, don't do that. Don't start singing. Let another spirit take you. And I'm not talking about switching drinks, okay? That's not the spirit. All right. Number 10. It helps speaking abilities. Once I heard Mel Tillis. Anybody know who Mel Tillis is? Mel stuttered terribly until he found out that he could sing. And the rhythm of the music helped him formulate his words. And that is still a therapy used today. If my daughter-in-law were here today, she'd tell you she's a speech and language pathologist. But song comes into our lives in so many wonderful ways. Where would your music be without song? Now, if you really want to experience song, give it to God. All the songs. Give them to God. And Jim, I hate to say this, but yes, even those who rap, Find a spiritual connection to God. God didn't say anywhere that we had to understand each other's music. He just says, do it, right? So that piece of passage from Ephesians has taken me to this place to share Wesley's tunes. He said, learn them all. Well, he didn't have that big blue book, folks. It was a little bitty book about, I've seen one. They're about this big and about that wide and maybe about 30 pages in it. So when he was saying, learn these songs, learn them all completely. And if you've learned them in one way and it's the wrong way, unlearn them and learn them this way. After you've learned all these songs, you are more than welcome to learn any other song you want. Wesley knew that when we are in fellowship, when we keep one eye to God and we stay connected, our lives are more complete. I didn't say without trouble. Gibson City had trouble this week. God didn't leave us, though. God's right here with us. Now this week, if you're working out and about, go ahead and sing. I'm not asking if you're a good singer or not, because I hear all of you who think you can't sing saying, oh, you don't want to hear me sing. I'll drive everybody out. I didn't see that in the rules. I saw it try to stay with those around you. Keep in tune and sing to God. So maybe someone will join you. Uh, the kids wanted to sing, I, want, I, I love rock and roll tonight, or to this morning. They... <clears throat> I didn't know we could play that on that guitar. Hey, whatever you got, give it to God. That's where I went this week. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Wow. We are in our prayer time. Uh, I've spoken with a couple of people. One of them just got out of the hospital from having COVID. So it is still here and I ask us all to be as mindful as we possibly can and we're gonna whip this thing so I lift up everyone who is in that place wondering and searching and trying to see which way to go you know we'll see what happens amen other things school starting up and we're getting supplies in people's hands we need to do that right we'll keep doing that you know of anybody that doesn't have the school supplies to start? We'll help them out. Fair enough. Been praying for hospital workers this week. I know there are a lot of people that have been undergoing a lot of stress, especially around our area. And the folks that work in those areas are dealing with a lot more than they normally would. So we remember that. I'm reminded from the parking lot that we are not alone. Gibson City is not alone. I see 
the UMCOR vehicles out here, the, the relief vehicles out here. I see Red Cross volunteers throughout the town. I see neighbor helping neighbor. It's a good thing, people. Let me invite you to go to that place where you talk to God, just that one-on-one -on -one place. And uh, wherever it is you find, I will give you some music to meditate with and by and spend a little time in prayer. Let's do that together. I would imagine Gibson City has been on overload, flooding you with prayers. Most of us firsthand have experienced places that have been devastated by the water. So we were going through one house and all of the wedding pictures and the baby pictures and the memories were all melting away in the water and sadness was overtaking the family. All of a sudden, you were there giving us strength and encouragement. Forgive us, God, when we get so attached to our stuff that it takes our minds and our thoughts and our hearts. But we can't help it sometimes. It is just so overwhelming. Can't tell you how many times this week we've heard the words, I don't know what I'm going to do. And we turn to you, God, for that guidance. And I ask as a church family that we would be that place to show people a way out of where they are right now and into your loving care. Part of that starts with each individual here getting outside of themselves. And because of the love that is in each one of us that Jesus has given, we offer. We say things like, how can I help? I'll pray for you. I can't do that right now, but I will be back. And in those kinds of statements, we find you. Now I want to celebrate a little bit, God, as you are with members joining the church and with baptisms that are happening, with ideas of what does it mean to dedicate our lives to you. And in the midst of our lives, we find your life. And it was given through your son, Jesus Christ. And in the midst of that, all that is going on, Jesus reminds us that he will be with us always. And we hold fast to that this morning. So special blessings on each individual today that they might have a closer communion with you even with all that is happening. We are so blessed that we get to come to a point now that we pray a prayer that millions of people are praying all over the world at this very minute. And we join our voices as an unending hymn. And we pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I would like to invite the ushers to come forward. My prayer is that God will continually bless you and keep you and hold you and rain down from heaven blessings as you've never known. Amen. Uh, this last song seems really appropriate to sing today. Uh, in everything, give thanks to God. But, you know, we're walking through this natural disaster and often it's really easy to uh, kick the dog instead of pet the dog if you catch my drift. So let's sing Give Thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks. Because he's given Jesus Christ his son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. And now let the weak say, I am. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. Brother, sister, let me serve you. 
let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. And all of God's people say, Amen. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe.